So, the video you've all been waiting for, the final Caliandros video, so that I'll finally shut up about it. I know, I know, so I can finally shut up. But when I say final, I only mean for a year because the next one comes out in September and believe it or not, I am going to read it. So, mm, sorry, you only get a year reprieve and then it's more Caliandros. But lesser, lesser. You won't have to put up with me dealing with it for an entire month because that is just, that's crazy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a very non-spoilery overview and my feelings about it in a short version and then I'm going to go on and do a longer discussion for others who have read it and also because I want to say things out loud that happen so that I can tell you how insane some of these things are. So yes, short version. I will give you a spoiler alert and then I will go on to the long version where I'll go book by book. But before I start, let me just say, yes, I do like this series, even though everything I'm about to say next will probably be sarcastic, snarky, frustrated, and just blah. I did like it. Enough that I read all eight of them. I mean, who sits and reads eight books of something they really, really just can't find? A taste for at all. So obviously it was good enough for me to read all of them and I'm pretty sure that's a character thing because just me and characters, I, I, I hate not knowing what happens to them. Absolutely this series is not for everybody. It is definitely escapist fiction. It is definitely not the highest rung of writing. So if you're uber particular and anything lesser than your absolute top favorite, will irritate the bejesus out of you, then don't, don't bother, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so just FYI, <laughs> it's okay. Let's go on with the snarkier bits and the overview for folks. So book one, Nightlife, in which you were introduced to the major players, a character is possessed by a supernatural being. You're bamboozled by how a female writer could create female characters who are totally pointless except for the love interest, you will inevitably be attracted to this Mexi car salesman, and there is loads of brotherly angst. Moonshine, in which everyone thinks pain and threats of violence are useful motivational tools, the main character sulks over his non-sex life, there are gigantical deformed wolves, and the main villain isn't introduced until the last hundred pages. Madhouse, in which a corpsified serial killer resurrects in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, a better female character appears, and the attempted assassination of Robin Goodfellow is entirely anticlimactic. Death Wish, in which everyone has trust issues for no reason, Goodfellow is thrust into a relationship at the end of the novel without any prior history explained whatsoever, and Nico kills many things in a merciless fashion. Roadkill, in which the world is in danger due to a insane, disease-loving anti-healer, Cal is using his grip on humanity like a crazed crack addict, the most interesting character is a bossy wolf, and Goodfellow is adorable when he calls his boyfriend to give him his current danger status. Also, the cover is glossy for no reason. Blackout, in which Cal is the most fun he's ever been, Nico is having a crisis of conscience, Goodfellow gets repeatedly stabbed with a fork, and we get a replay of that one scene in Alien Resurrection, only less heart-wrenching and way more creepifying. Double Take, in which the author summarizes the first six books in the first three to four chapters, therefore invalidating any attempt to have marathoned the series up until this point, and providing absolutely none of the Robin Goodfellow in peril promised by the back cover blurb, although you do get to see a flicker of his darker past, which hints at the true depths of his character, except that in the end this book has nothing to do with him whatsoever. Also, Two-Faced Lava Basilisks, Nick's father is still a dick, only secretly, and the Grimm Brothers takes on a whole new smexier meaning. Slashback, in which the author gives us her best plotted book to date, all while showing us that Nico and Cal were five times more interesting when they were children, not to mention more adorable, only to end the story with the most bizarro concept that up until book seven she never mentioned even once, I.D.E.K. And that, my friends, was a summary of the entire series. Now, in what order would I rate these as favorites? Flashback, Blackout, Roadkill, Moonshine, Madhouse, Nightlife, Double Take, and Death Wish. Now, oddly enough, Blackout and Roadkill, which were um, two of my top favorites, they're actually the most complained about books in the series as far as online reviews. People are typically saying that they're very slow and there's no character development, and I completely disagree. I think they're the two that 
have the most character development and I didn't find them slow at all. I'm sorry if you don't get enough battles in your books, but um, frankly I get sick and tired of people fighting all the time. So while I do like tension and I do like conflict, I don't need fighting because fighting's the same all the time. It's always the same thing. And since you're pretty much guaranteed not to have any of the main characters die, most of the time, unless you're, I don't know, George R. R. Martin or potentially Jim Butcher, but sometimes not even Jim Butcher. Yep, actually no. Pretty sure only one character who was a main at one point died in his books and I didn't like her anyway. So beyond that, general overview, as far as the characters go, the characters do get better. Um, I know in Nightlife I was really on the edge with about Nico. He, I felt like he was too straight-faced, too over the top in terms of his ability to get stuff dead <laughs> without really injuring himself or getting anyone else caught up and in trouble. That changes over the course of the series and you finally get to see toward the end some of his like mental anguish. The kid's been fighting since he's like 15 or earlier and he's been taking care of his brother since he was four which FYI I think is ludicrous. It's ridiculous. I'm not sure if a four-year-old is capable of taking care of an infant. But we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about the details. I mean, these books would not hold up under serious scrutiny. But in terms of just fun times, I mean, we're we're going a little light on them. Like, if I was reading this and taking a serious hardcore stance on it, it would be different. But we're not doing that. So character-wise, Cal gets scarier. Nico gets more interesting. Goodfellow remains Goodfellow, but you start to see that he wasn't always the way he is. Like you see glimpses of things mentioned in his past, but since there's never any real focus on him, although apparently book nine coming out next year, he's going to get finally, finally, finally his own point of view. I don't know what has taken so long. Uh, rumor has it that her editor didn't like him or doesn't like him, and that's dumb. I know problem if you don't personally like him as a character, but if you've ever checked up on any of the reviews ever anywhere, you find that he's pretty much everyone's favorite character, so bad move. <laughs> bad move. That said, you have to be careful with a character like Robin because you can ruin him. It is possible. It has happened to me before in books where finally my favorite has gotten a point of view chapter uh, or, or novel of his own and uh, Destroyed. Character assassination. Absolute author fail. That better not happen. But I have faith in you, Rob Thurman. I have faith that you will not do that. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Wow, I get distracted. Like, whoa, talking about these books. Yes, characters improve. The women still have no purpose. It, it makes me crazy. Like, don't even get me started on Georgina. She's just so obnoxious and pointless and doesn't even show up. They talk to her like once per book up until a certain point where she isn't in it really. And um, thank goodness. And you find out what happens to her later. And uh, frankly, I'm not sorry. I won't tell you what it was, but I'm not sorry. Whatever it was. It's, yeah. Anyhow, did not like that girl. She was just useless and mostly frustrated the main characters, which frustrated me on their behalf. Promise, I like. Other people don't like Promise. I don't know why. But then there's really not enough of her around to really care. So, you know, oh well. A lot of people don't like Delilah either. She shows up in book three. But I like her the most of all the females out there. And there aren't many, which female writer, I don't understand. That's fine. But she's ambitious and she has her own thing going on and she's very straightforward and I like that. I like that she just inserts herself into other people's business because otherwise there's no other way to get any face time in the series. Pretty sure that covers all the girls. Wow, there's no girls in the series. But you know what? I don't care because if they're not going to get face time then who cares about that. There are some other characters who show up. Um, Rafferty and Catcher, they're actually in book one but then they're gone and they come back in another book. And some other folks, a couple that I can't tell you about because that'll be spoilerish. So you know you can come back for the discussion part later when you've read it. Um, but in general, Cal and Nico are the top two. Robin gets more face time than others. There's one character who comes in in the seventh book, 
who is important or who will become more important, presumably, if the series continues, and also Ishaya, who is rarely in it, mostly just there to smash people's faces into the bar when he's in a bad mood. So... But he is kind of important to Robin. That's enough about the characters because, frankly, there's not a lot more for me to say without giving stuff up. Next, as far as the plotting and the writing goes, the plots are really just sort of your typical urban fantasy fair, with the exception that they do arc a little bit when it comes to Cal. As far as everyone else goes, the arcing, ha it doesn't mean much. But to Cal, it means something, and it means something to Nico because he's basically attached to Cal's hip at all times, mothering him. So the plotting's not bad. I think Slashback was the best one. I think Roadkill was good, and I think Blackout wasn't bad. Sometimes the plots don't really go well together, like in Double Take, where th the back cover leads you to believe the story is about Robin and about Nico's father. It's not about any of that. The thing with Robin is over within the first five to six chapters, and then has n almost, almost no bearing on the rest of the story whatsoever, except for the bit where they kind of flipped a switch in his head where he's like flipping out about his past. <laughs> Don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> so that's really the only connection that has. Nico's father does show up, but actually the main point of the story, the important part of the story, has to do with a character who's not even talked about on the back cover. He's not even there, and he's really the whole main important thrust of the whole novel. So fail, double take, fail. So in Nightlife, it was pretty good. The beginning was slow because it was just a lot of like waffling back and forth. I talk about that in my video um, about Nightlife. So good but doesn't pick up until the middle, but then it's good pretty much through the end. I'm still not 100% on the ending only because I, I suspension of disbelief, it gets rough with me sometimes. Then in Moonshine, everything's pretty interesting. There's a lot of tension, a lot of politicking, but like I mentioned in my snarky summary, you don't meet the villain, like the actual legit villain, until the end. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Plot of Madhouse, pretty cohesive, but again, a lot of back and forth. Leaving, coming back, leaving, coming back. I don't, uh. And then the thing with Robin and the assassination attempts, I just, uh, uh. And just at the end, it's like, really? That's what you got? You're like the worst assassins in the history of ever. Death Wish was pretty well plotted. I got really annoyed with the character interactions in that book, so I think in this one, plot trumps character interactions. Then in Roadkill, I really enjoyed Roadkill. A lot of people talk down about Roadkill. They're like, there's no character development, and there's no fighting, and there's no, it's not fast enough. And I disagree with all of that. I think it actually had some of the better character development, especially with Cal, who was like losing his business the whole time. So no, it was 100% action-packed when compared to some of the previous books. Personally, I get tired of constant fighting, because I'm like, it's just fighting. You're gonna fight pretty constantly throughout the whole series. I I've seen it. I it's yeah, can we do something else? So she did something else, and I liked it. I preferred it, actually. Thank you, Rob Thurman. Oh, but check out uh, this one page of my book where um, yeah, printer fail, cut off the whole <laughs> edge. Not as bad as the one time I got a book and like the whole page was blacked out and you turn the page some more and blacked out. Yeah, that didn't go over well. This one, that was okay and it was the only incident. So as far as the one after that, which is Blackout. Blackout was super fun. I thought Blackout was really fun because Amnesia Cal, awesome. Uh, but mostly it was entertaining because, again, it helped to develop Nico as a character instead of Cal because, you know, Cal doesn't remember, he's having to relearn all that stuff. But it's what would he do for Nico who is like flipping out over this whole situation. And then the other part of the plot besides the character interactions in that one is a little looser. It has to do with a, I don't know, Egyptian pseudo goddess who's like doing weird stuff. I thought Blackout was good for Nico's character, which thank God, because he finally is just getting away from that him being perfect thing. I hate that. I hate over perfected characters, so I'm so glad to see that he has like real problems. 
besides the obvious problems of being chased by monsters all the time because I mean that is you know an issue and then there's double take so the plot of double take was good in the sense that once you got to the actual plot by which I mean not what the back cover told you the plot was going to be but other than that I thought double take was not too bad Slashback, like I said in my little summaries, was better, like, the best, actually, of the plotted stuff. And when I get to this discussion part where I am very candid and actually say out loud what's going on, um, I will tell you why the ending is absolute balls, and I don't even. So, but the rest of it, the rest of it before the tail, 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 tail end, like, literally the last ten pages, really good. Actually, probably my favorite. Good stuff. Good job. So here's the thing about Rob Thurman's writing style in this particular series, and I say this particular series because I haven't read any of her others. I did read that one short story, which is by far and away the best thing of hers I've read yet. And I do want to read her like slightly horrorish mystery story. It's like a standalone novel. I want to read that and want to see if it's different than this. But in this series, the writing style is mediocre at best. I'm just saying. It's meant to be easy, it's not meant to be, like, up here, okay? She gets away with a lot of stuff that, if it were me, that's a no. No. Gets away with too much. Too much. Repetition of things that don't need to be repeated. Summarizing of things that don't need to be summarized. Like, I've gone on about this ad nauseum, so I'm not going to go on about it anymore. But if you can ignore that stuff and just let it be what it is, then you're fine. Then you're fine. And uh, it's, it's okay. Alright, this is where we stop. This is where if you don't know anything about this series and you want to read it yourself, you don't want to be spoiled because they're about to be spoilers, 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 spoilers. This is where you say bye-bye and come back later. It's so, okay. Bye-bye for now, ones who want to actually read this. Bye-bye. Go, go. Everybody else, hello. So, okay, I'm basically gonna go through this book by book and just be straight out blunt and tell you what I did and didn't like and what I thought was just out of control, okay? So, this one, Nightlife. So bored at the beginning. Like, oh, seriously, dudes. If it wasn't for Robin being all up in the first part, I, I would have skipped it. The second part, though, the part where he, um, where Cal is possessed by the Darkling, I found that fun. I found that very fun because Cal, possessed by a Darkling, he just turned bad boy for, like, I mean, I know he's, like, got the off genes and he's gonna go crazy bad eventually, but, oh, Stardust went off. Oh. Anyhow. So I know he's got like the bad genes, the off genes, so eventually he's gonna go bonkers and kill stuff anyway. But watching him combined with Darkling was so much fun. He was just twice the character. But I guess what I didn't understand was how Darkling would just control the whole situation. They kept saying how he was now something better, a mix of two different things, or technically three, human, off, and Darkling. So I wondered why Darkling was all, I we're a new creature, except not really, really you're mostly just Cal being controlled by Darkling because I didn't see any of Cal's thoughts up in there at all. So that was my only, like, uh, and then the whole thing about Cal having to die in order to kill, or separate Darkling from him because Darkling wouldn't want to die so he would jump out of Cal at the last minute. And then, you know, Nico having to stab him and then save him at the last second with his healer friend who, frankly, his healer friend lives on Long Island, right? I think it was Long Island and they had to travel from the city to there, like, more than 30 minutes. How was Cal not dead? How was he not completely dead from bleeding out from a gut wound? <laughs> I don't know about that, guys. And that's a little iffy. I'm not so sure about all that. <laughs> Um, good stuff about this, otherwise, yeah, Robin is the man. I love him to death, but when Cal threw him in front of the Boggle and then was all like, I'm sorry, 
I'm a monster, I threw you in front of a boggle. Um, that's really not the mark of a monster, it's probably the mark of a good brother. If I were saving my sister's life and the only way to do that was to throw someone else in front of a strange supernatural creature, I would probably do that. Just saying. Um, cause that's your family, and I don't know that guy. So, yeah, I wouldn't feel too bad, Cal. And, uh, Robin understood. <laughs> he understood, but he was like, all you had to do was ask me to, you know, distract him, and I'd have done it. Didn't have to go be rude about it. So, in Moonshine, the characters are, um, they're, they're running their supernatural detective agency slash extermination groups, whatever. They basically are mercenaries, only they'd prefer not to kill people who don't deserve it. So they try not to get mixed up in that kind of business, but usually the people they're asked to exterminate have done horrible things and so they don't care. But, uh, <laughs> they, um, they get hired by members of the kin, so the werewolf mafia, right? And they end up catching this one guy who's part of the kin and he like got mixed up in this whole situation himself. His name is Flay, he's a wolf. In what universe is violence and threats like constantly a motivator? I would not be motivated by someone who's constantly saying they were going to kill me or by saying we're not going to kill you yet. Well, if there's a yet, then why am I even talking to you anyway? I mean, eventually you think you're going to do it at some point? Like... No, like, either you're going to do it now or you're not going to do it at all. So like, why don't we just be nice and sort this business out? Because, you know, I'm pretty sure Flay would have answered their questions without the constant, like, beat-ups. So besides that, and I hope you feel bad, Cal, the fact that Flay's son was kidnapped and you were being an ass this whole time beating up on this guy, like, then finally, finally thinking to ask the question, why are you even still in this? And why are you here? Why did you come crawling to our door when you're injured? And he's like, yeah, my son was captured by the same people who took your friend. Oh, hope you feel bad, Cal. Hope you feel really bad. FYI, that friend is Georgina, and I wish she just didn't even exist in this series at all. I hate her. She's so useless. Hey, Georgina, I really like you, but uh, I'm kind of a monster. Don't want to spread my genes around and create baby monsters, so... Maybe you could take a look and tell me if that will happen or if things will end badly for us if we get together. No, we just have to go with the flow. We just have to let things be the way they are. No, no, look, you're a psychic. You have that power. Check it. Check. Because I'm going to leave you if not. So check it. She never does. Except apparently like six books later when it doesn't matter because she dies. Because cows... Uh, not brother, but like another off-human hybrid who was successful, only the off didn't know that because he escaped and the guy who was keeping him lied to them, so they thought he died. Yeah, he's actually more of a success than Cal was and um, they didn't know, so, ha. Huh. But he kills her for being weak and annoying, so I don't feel bad because she was really annoying. But uh, then she went and did this thing where she like, block the memory of herself from his mind. It's too bad. You find out at the end of Moonshine that the villain is the oldest puck period. And, and the puck race is what Robin Goodfellow is. So Robin Goodfellow, the one older than him because Robin is an offshoot and that's how pucks um, procreate or it's by like division. They literally like self-divide like a cell. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. But that's how it works. So, uh, they don't go into that in detail, but I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, yeah, he's insane. This, this puck is insane. And he steals Nico and Cal loses his mind and this and that. And it's just sort of like, I liked that you find out that the guy who was just a rude bartender turned out to be the villain, but then at the same time, I'm like, man, that would have been so much more interesting than messing around with random wolves. Way more interesting. But then Hob gets sent to Tumulus, and Tumulus is like where the off live, and it's a really, really horrible, disgusting, stinky place, and Cal like has a brain shut down every time he tries to think about the two years he was there. Oh, oh, and that whole scene where like they try to hypnotize him to find out what happened to him in Tumulus, and it was so bad that he completely flips it and is like running around 
biting people and uh, and you only hear about it because I mean we were seeing it from Cal's point of view and he's under hypnosis and doesn't know what happens so that was weird. Then of course there's Madhouse where Shawnee Bean who was a serial killer of some kind gets resurrected in the Met Museum by a mummy who lives downstairs and like does experiments on random animals. Yeah they end up having to take Shawnee Bean down because I mean, serial killer, eating people in New York, it's gross. So they do that, and then at the same time they meet Delilah, who is Flay's sister, the Flay from book two, and she and Cal hook up, and they can do that because she's sterile, because apparently a big wolf, like, destroyed her reproductive system. So she can't have wolflets or offlets. So, and then it turns out that Robin's housekeeper is trying to kill him, because she's actually... What was she? Syrian or Sumerian? Or he used to pretend that he was a god and then something horrible happened and then he left, but it was really all sort of a coincidence and he didn't mean for it to happen. And they all thought he abandoned them and coincidentally, like, their whole civilization was destroyed right after he left and they thought that he abandoned them and so they came to kill him and then they all die. It was the most anticlimactic assassination attempt ever fail. But then we get to see Robin be drunken in self-loathing for a little while. It doesn't last long. Oh, but then at the end of book three there's this cliffhanger where all these off um, show up and you think they're all dead because they were supposed to have all died in book one and who would have believed that? Whoever believed something like that would have been stupid because obviously they have the ability to leave. They have the ability to rip holes in the world and go through one falling building is not going to kill them all. Like, obvious, right? No. Apparently not obvious. Anyway, book four, which is Death Wish, which I have here. Uh, Promises Cray Cray Daughter shows up and makes everyone mad because Cal is like, oh, Promise didn't tell us about her daughter. She lied to you, Nico. She lied to you. Well, not telling him that she didn't have a daughter and him not ever actually asking, it's not technically lying. Actually, that's not lying at all, that's just not mentioning something that wasn't important at the time. So, I mean, her daughter is a thief and a liar and a horrible person and she tries for the most part to not think about her. So I'm like, how was that lying? She didn't want to think about it, it wasn't important to the time, and why are you making a big deal out of it, guys? So they spend like a good portion of the book back and forth about that ridiculousness. And then there's a chupacabra. A little chupacabra. So it turns out through the whole book that Cherish has been lying to everyone and using the chupacabra to like scramble their brains and Nico has a freak out and kills everything down at Central Park and <laughs> and then he kills Cherish. He kills his girlfriend's daughter and her chupacabra which I thought was just rude but um, I kind of get why he did it because I mean if it can control people's minds that's not good but he wasn't doing it it's a really morally gray thing, so I don't know how to feel about it, but, um, not sad that Cherish is gone, but then he had to, like, not talk to Promise for six months because he didn't know how she'd feel about him killing her, even though he called her up and was like, hey, I'm gonna have to kill her, and Promise was like, I'm not gonna stop you, she's a bad person, so <laughs> they really had that conversation. So anyway, he couldn't talk to her for six months because he's like, every time I look at you, I see her and she made me think Kyle was dead and I went out and killed stuff and it like broke me for all of an hour. Yeah. They have a lot of personal problems in this series. Oh, oh, I forgot. In Moonshine, in order to get Georgina back, and who would want to, they have to go talk to this gypsy clan about getting this item that they had they had one and there are two, so the wolves had one, the gypsies have one. So there was this crown that they got successfully and was going to give it to the guy who wanted it in order to get Georgina back, even though it turns out that that wouldn't have worked. But uh, Cal lost it and off, opened up a door, walked right up to him and like took it right out of his hand while he was like, oh crap, off. Yeah, that, that was the thing. And they had to go to this really mean crazy old gypsy lady to get another one and to get it they try to get Robin to negotiate but that doesn't work and then 
So Carol threatens to tear off the nose of one of her people and she really liked that. She thought that was a manly thing to do. So she gives it to them, ne neglecting to tell them that in order to make it work, someone has to be sacrificed. So when Nico is later kidnapped to be the sacrifice, Cal gets mad at everyone. He's like, you didn't tell me. You risked my brother's life, so hate you. Next time I see you, you're dead. And this guy, I'm sending him to Tumulus, so bye. And I'm, I'm a horrible, horrible person. I'm about to break my brain by using gates that I couldn't use a book ago. Yep. Also, while they're with the gypsies, they kill an off. And it turns out that this is the last male off. This becomes important in the book I was just talking about, which was Death Wish, where all the female offs show up and say, Hey Cal, you're the last male off ever, even though you're a hybrid, so we're gonna steal you and force you into stud service and Tumulus because that's not a bad idea, like the worst idea ever, because Cal, he's not, -uh, not doing it. So for a lot of Death Wish, while well, Cherish has people coming to kill them from one end, they are trying to prevent Cal from being snatched up by the off to be taken away and forced into reproductive slavery. Needless to say, Cal would have gone insane, insane. It's already bad enough he was there for two years and can't remember and that makes him crazy. This other business would have been way off the charts. So. For roadkill, the um, gypsy lady comes back and she's like, oh, so there's this like crazy anti-healer that we couldn't kill ever and he's locked in a coffin only someone stole it and possibly the wards that were preventing him from breaking out of the coffin are, um, yeah, they're wearing off. So he's about to break out and we need to kind of go get him. And Cal's like, well, I think I should just kill you. And Nico's like, I don't think that's a good idea. Anyway, they go on a road trip. But Nico's the worst boyfriend ever. Even Robin, who at the end of book four, is like paired up with Ashaya, the Perry from the bar, Cal's boss. They hook up and now he's in a monogamous, monogamous relationship with this Perry, which is ridiculous for a puck because they don't do monogamy. But... He's doing it, and he calls the Perry every once in a while to be like, hey, stuff's happening, just FYI, I almost died, just FYI, going into a battle, just FYI. But not once does Nico call promise. I'm like, Nico, you're the worst boyfriend ever. Even Robin, who doesn't even believe in monogamy, is a better boyfriend than you. It's sad. It's sad, Nico. Shame on you. In the end, they successfully take care of whatever but the whole time like Cal's complete freakouts where he's just like jonesing to make more gates and more gates and basically the more gates he makes the more off he becomes until finally at the end when he like runs out and kills a deer and eats it ugh, ew he like completely lost it and then he's like thinking about killing his own brother and that's where he's like no no more of this so he has their healer friend like break his mind so that he can't make more than two gates before his heart or brain explodes. That was an interesting resolution that I knew wasn't going to last. And there's Blackout in which Cal has amnesia, which was the best, and Amnesia Cal was fun. He was cool, and I liked his snarkiness way more as Amnesia Cal, because it was cuter in some weird, strange, bizarre way. Uh, the fact that there is like a pseudo-goddess chasing him and wanting his brothers and sisters because it turns out that the failed off experiments were being kept in a little town for Cal's eventual like turning to the off side so that he could go play with them and murder them all. That was my phone because the off are sick like that and they thought that he would want to do that. So he does end up going and killing them but quickly because he's like they've been kept in cages and tortured and turned into animals and scary scary monster creatures so we can't have them running around and to be fair they were creepifying just really but uh yeah it turns out uh, one of them escaped before he ever got there like eight years before or something before he was even born actually and that's who shows up that's Grimm in Double Take and Grimm is actually a really good character I like him before I talk about that really quick yeah Nico flipping out and poisoning Cal 
not poisoning, I guess he, I, I, don't, I don't know what to call it. He was sort of drugging Kyle to keep the amnesia because he felt like Kyle would be happier. But then he was having a crisis of conscience believing he was harming his brother. I'm like, you need to just stop. You guys, first of all, you guys are way too close. <laughs> like, y you gotta lay off each other because you're constantly like babying him and then he's constantly worrying about you and you're not gonna get anything done. You're just not gonna get anything done. But yeah, that's really, that was all for Black Ops, sorry. Anyway, Grim. Yeah, Grim is interesting. Grim does kill Georgina, only he doesn't remember. He is older than Cal. They have like a legit fun time playing at killing each other. And he's trying to recreate the off um, population by breeding with succubi. So there's part human, part succubus, part off creatures running around now, like thousands of them, and they think there's only maybe 50, but there are thousands. So that happens. And then the whole thing with Robin at the beginning, it turns out he's directly, like, comes from Hob, who was the villain in book two. So at one time, he was a bad dude. Yeah, and he he doesn't want to remember that ever, because if he does, he'll become a bad person. And uh, because what happens is, I guess they live for so long that um, the more they remember, the more crazy they get. So he like intentionally doesn't remember some stuff from like way back in the day, especially considering he's the direct split off of, of the Hob character. Because like I said, Pox like they just separate. That's how they make more of themselves. So in Double Take, they're having like the lottery where basically there's a lot of Puck carousing, and then Puck's trying to kill each other, and then they all pick straws, and like, X number of them have to go off and split off from each other. And they really hate that, because they hate it that they all come from one of the other ones, so they're not individuals until the point where they've like, gained enough experience so that they're their own person. Which I think is kind of cool, I kind of like that. Who's texting me? In the middle of stuff. Busy. So Grimm was the best thing about Double Take. I did enjoy the Puck reunion, but it's just, they implied that there was going to be some kind of consequence to winning the Puck lottery, and there wasn't. There was nothing. And Robin himself even implies, he's like, please, as if I would win that lottery. I don't want to win it. Nobody wants to win it. Uh, I'm way too good for anyone to ever get me into that lottery. <laughs> And I see why he wouldn't want to, obviously, like, there really can only be one of him because two would just blow everyone's mind. But still, still. It was funny watching them interact, but there was no peril whatsoever, like, no consequence to this thing. And, uh, yeah. So Nico's father showing up and then acting like a really nice person and I really liked him all the way up until the end when it turns out he was playing them the whole time. Mad. Angry. Not surprised, but kind of angry at his father. I guess I was supposed to be, so I guess that's fine. And then of course the crazy like lava basilisk created by Hephaestus who turns out is sort of a half-alive god and in insane and hates Robin for stealing Aphrodite. There's something really complicated going on there. So in Slashback, we go back and forth with these kids, like one minute they're adults and one minute they're kids, and this is the best in terms of how she handled that with the spring Heel Jack character and getting the kids, you know, and then their adult selves in the flashbacks. Really well done, like I was impressed a little bit. And then having that past experience relate to the present experience, all well and good, all very good. Last 10 pages, and this goes into the fact that she started talking about Achilles and Patrocles in the previous book. Nick is the descendant of Achilles, Cal is the descendant of Patrocles. But oh no, wait! They're not descendants, they're reincarnations. Nick is the reincarnation of Achilles, and Cal is the reincarnation of Patrocles because they were forever destined to meet Rob Goodfellow over and over and over and keep him company throughout his entire long extended immortal life. This is really just the author wanting to play in her own sandbox. I mean, 
it basically comes down to, oh, I want to show you what Kyle and Nico's personalities would have been like if they weren't like this, and so I'm going to. Because I'm thinking that's what's going to happen in the next book, since a lot of it has to do with, um, I think, Goodfellow remembering them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reincarnation just came out of nowhere. She could pretend that she always had that in her head, but I do not believe for one second. Plus, plus Patroclus, who's Cal's reincarnation, sounds like Patroclus, who is my third least favorite character from Soul Calibur. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to have to go play Soul Calibur and make a character that looks just like Cal based on the Patroclus uh, fighting style. Hang on. Yeah, I'm almost done. Yep, hang on. So yeah, that was, I don't know, it was a long, long, random sort of discussion, I'm sorry. Feel free to discuss with me because um, I really want to know how you guys feel about the, uh, the reincarnation thing if you've, if you've read this series and if you've read it, do you also think it's ridiculous that there has been no Robin Goodfellow POV up until this point? Isn't that just a fail bot? Ooh, but who loves Salome? Who loves his mummy cat? I do. Love the mummy cat. The best. The best. Love her. Anyhow, I'm going to stop now because I've talked a long time and uh, pretty sure you're all sick of listening to me. So, okay, gonna let it go now. Gonna let it go and you didn't hear me say it, but it might be that I end up reading her other stupid series set in this stupid universe, but with a stupid female lead up in Las Vegas. Why? I don't know why. But we're not doing it right now. Right now we're going to be reading sci-fi and horror. That's it. That's it. None of this other stuff for a while. So, okay. That's it. Bye.